Hey guys, this is Steggy from MLG Pro, giving you a video review of the SteelSeries 5H version 2 headset. Now, the 5H V2 is the second SteelSeries product I have for you guys. It is in the same price range as the Siberian neckband, but the model I am testing can be seen online for about $100, and the package includes the 5H V2, the extension cord, and a USB sound card with virtual 7.1 surround sound built in. So let's just jump right into the design of it. The 5H V2 is very similar to the neckband, but also completely different than it. As far as design goes, the 5H V2 is an open ear headset. The SteelSeries 5H V2 is a stereo PC headset with two 3.5mm jacks on the end. So, in order to use this headset for Xbox Live and your Xbox 360, you either need to use A, the Astro Mix Amp paired with the Astro PC headset adapter, or B, the Steel Series Xbox 360 headset adapter, with the Steel Series headset adapter being a, the cheaper solution. Because while it may allow you to communicate with your teammates and hear the game sound, you lose some features that the Astro Mix Amp has, like voice and game balancing and Dolby Headphone Virtual 5.1 surround. It has a Steel Series retractable microphone with a flexible metal gooseneck. For great positioning. You can have it as close or as far away from your mouth as your heart desires. The 5HV2 is a traditional headset shape. The ear cups go completely around the ears and the 5HV2 has a plush headband that allows for long gaming sessions without fatigue. For microphone quality, the SteelSeries headsets are consistent with one another. I mean yeah, I've seen better microphones like on the Sennheiser PC350s, but everything gets mangled over Xbox Live anyways. The big thing is just good response from the microphone so you don't have to shout to get the icon to show. And the clarity doesn't hurt either. The Steel Series are all successful in those aspects. One thing I've noted in the unboxing of this headset is that it is a detachable headset. It is advertised as a way to make the headset more travel friendly. I still personally wouldn't have use for that feature myself, but maybe some of you guys out there can. Going down the cord, you have the inline control that can mute your microphone change the level of your microphone, and change the level of your volume. Now let's finish with the USB sound card. The sound card that comes with the 5H V2 employs virtual surround sound. So if you're a PC gamer, any normal PC headset you have can actually plug right into this adapter, and you can get a feel for virtual surround sound. As you read in the next review of the Siberia V2, the 5H V2's sound card doesn't have controls like the Siberia does, but you still have the virtual 7.1, and you have the mic talkback feature, so you can monitor your voice during PC games, so you aren't shouting at 2 o'clock in the morning when your roommates are trying to sleep. Do you remember how I said that the 5H V2 is similar, yet completely different than the Siberia neckband? Well, its difference is in its sound. I found the Siberia neckband sound signature to favor the lower end of the audio spectrum, with its lows and its mids. The 5H V2 leans towards the other end, the higher end with its highs and mids, in Modern Warfare 2, it works out pretty good, because at least air support isn't rumbling my brain around the old noggin and drowning every other sound out. I mean, you will still have air support annoy you when you're trying to position enemies with your ears, but it is in the game how it would be in real life, so to speak. Harriers, Pavlos, and even that damn AC-130 all cover many parts of an audio spectrum. You can never really win. But at least the 5H V2 tries by not having the low end completely drown everything out with its booming bass. As far as positioning goes, I feel like the footsteps are a little bit fainter in the 5H V2 than the Siberia neckband and the Siberia V2. I would still peg this above the Siberia neckband because any commotion an enemy or teammate will start in a game will screw your chances of using your Siberia neckband to its fullest. But with the 5H V2, it performs pretty well for gaming, and it performs really well for the price because the 5H V2 is about $100 while the USB sound card that's included retails for about $40. So you can peg this headset as a $60 headset. As far as the sound card goes, I enjoyed using the 7.1 sound card with Half-Life 2 on the PC. It's not like I really needed a competitive advantage in a campaign mode of a game, but it's always fun to test the improvements of positioning with virtual surround sound. In music, you'd want to use this headset for acoustic songs or songs that focus more on the vocals rather than guitar and bass and drums. In a rock song, the hollow sound just sort of sucks the life out of music. But listening to songs like My Immortal were a pretty nice listen with the piano and the female vocals. So as in music, 
Movies aren't exactly immersive with this headset because of the weak low end. This headset really seems to be designed with gaming as its sole goal. Of course, you can still use this headset for the other applications, and depending on what headsets or headphones you've had in the past, this would probably still be a big improvement over your last pair. I'm just trying to give you as much information to let you make an informed decision on your purchase so you have the biggest variety to choose from and as much information as you can possibly get. So with all things considered, I favor the 5HV2 over the Siberian neckband. It is a lot more comfortable, and I love the idea of the included virtual surround sound sound card. But the question you have to ask yourself is how do you value this USB sound card? This goes for the Siberia V2 as well. If you like to PC game a lot, the audio quality you get from a USB sound card will be a great improvement if you are using onboard sound before then. So if you get a lot of use out of the USB sound card provided with these headsets, you can pretty much justify your headset as alone as a $60 purchase, because the USB sound cards sell for $40 on their own. So if you get the use out of it, you have that $40 accessory, and now you have the $60 headset with it. So when you have the headsets in that price range, what's going to be their competition? The only ones that come off to the top of my head are, are the Turtle Beach X1 and X11s, and the Skull Candy SGSs. The Steel Series easily outperformed those headsets in the price range, so this is my recommendation. If this is what your budget allows, if you play a lot of PC games, and you also play console games, then the 5HV2 or the Siberia V2 would make a great choice. You would just have to ask yourself which sound signature you would prefer. But seriously, take advantage of the included USB sound card if you buy these. If you actually aren't a PC gamer though, I've actually also seen the 5HV2 go on Newegg for a shocker deal. Uh, for 40 to $50 without the sound card. So you can get your hands on this headset for a cheaper price with the X11, X1, and the SGS, and you'll get better performance. So that'll do it for my thoughts of the 5HV2 headset. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And be sure to check out all the other videos on my YouTube channel page because I have a lot more headsets that I'm reviewing, including the Steel Series Siberia V2 so you can get a comparison between this headset and the Siberia V2, so you can make your decision on which headset you'd like to go for. So, this is Steggy B from MLG Pro. Once again, uh, thank you guys for watching.